What expenses can you claim in your serviced accommodation business? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock. Let's sit down and have a chat. Serviced accommodation, a great strategy and a lot of expenses that you can be claiming. Now the key thing here is as always with expenses that you have to make sure that they're wholly, necessarily and exclusively for business purposes. However, if you think about serviced accommodation or as some would see it as furnished holiday lets, there's a lot more expenses that you can claim and it is a lot more business-like than any other type of property strategy. That means there's a whole host of different expenses we can be claiming. So let's go through some of those in a little more detail so that you know what you can and what you can't be claiming on your serviced accommodation. Now the first one I'm going to start with is the interest that you may be paying on mortgages or loans that you have. Now the benefit of it being classified as a furnished holiday let or serviced accommodation is that actually whether you own it in your own name or in a company, you can fully claim all of the interest and the finance costs. So this is just a slight technical difference that with it being serviced accommodation, you aren't restricted like you are with normal residential properties. So that's great news and definitely a plus for doing the serviced accommodation side of property strategy. Now, moving on to some of the other expenses that we can claim, as with most things, if you're doing it through rent to rent, you'll have your rent, you'll have your ground rent, you'll have your service accommodation, all of these different expenses that you are incurring for that property, flat, house, whatever it may be. Now, because you are letting it on short term lets, that means you're going to be paying all the different bills. So that means you're going to be paying the water, the electricity, the gas, any other energy bills that you may have. All of these are fully allowable as you would expect. This leads me on to the bonus extras that you provide in your property. So you're going to have a TV license, you're going to have broadband, and I'm guessing you may even have things like Netflix or Amazon Prime or all these extra little bits to make your accommodation potentially better than somebody else. So if you do have any of those, again, these are all allowable expenses against your rental income. Now, most of us, if you're doing that sort of strategy, are not necessarily going to be going in every change of tenant, not quite tenant, visitor, um, client to your property. So on that basis, you're going to probably have a cleaning service or somebody who is going in to look after the property for you. All those expenses, those wages or that service that you're providing for, they are all allowable expenses. And the bonus on this one is, all of those little shampoos or conditioners, or if you're putting milk and champagne or any of those sorts of benefits for your customers, then all of those expenses are obviously allowable. The key thing here is just make sure you keep your receipts and keep everything together. Any travel that you do for your business, such as going to visit the property or maybe going to the shops to pick up all of those knickknacks that you are putting into the property, those are all going to be allowable expenses. So you can claim your mileage at 45p per mile up to 10,000 miles and 25p thereafter. So that's just a little way of claiming back that extra cost that you are incurring, probably on a regular basis, depending how active you are within this business. A few others to mention are things like your council tax because it's not for students or it's not going to be allowable for any other release potentially, so you'll be paying your council tax. Another is your insurance, which I would definitely remind you to make sure you get an appropriate insurance policy in place to ensure that you're not going to be under covered if something does go wrong. Which kind of leads nicely onto the next area, which is your repairs and maintenance. And as you are having more people in a short period of time, there is probably going to be repairs and maintenance that you are going to have to be doing on a regular basis. It's always about the benefits and not so beneficial things on property that the higher the return, probably the more expenses you are going to incur. So you're likely to get a, probably a few more repairs than if you were just doing a normal buy to let strategy. Depending how you are actually getting your customers, your clients into your property, there's probably gonna be fees and service charges 
or payment charges that you're incurring. So if you're using Airbnb or booking.com, there'll be their charges and then you'll probably have potentially card fees such as maybe Stripe or PayPal and all those sorts of expenses. So make sure you keep all those track of all those because they're all allowable expenses basically incurred in getting your business running and keeping it going. As well as accountancy, so if you are using an accountant, I definitely suggest using a qualified, chartered or certified accountant. But when you're working with them, those expenses are also going to be an allowable expense within the business. There are likely to be some admin expenses within the business. So things like maybe postage and stationery, printing costs, all these sorts of little knickknacks and telephone. And depending on how you've got your business structured through your own name or a limited company, there'll be slight differences in how you claim some of the different expenses, but most of them you can claim relevant costs for the business. Things like mobile phone is probably one of the ones that is definitely slightly different where you need the contract in the company name if you are claiming for it. But apart from that, most of the other expenses are probably okay depending how it fits together, as long as you can show that they're wholly necessarily and exclusively for business purposes. You're also allowed to claim a use of home as office allowance, and that will depend if you're in a limited company, you'll be able to claim the six pounds per week allowance. And if you're doing it in your own name, you can claim the self-employed allowances, which depends how many hours you're putting into the business from 10 pounds, 18 pounds, or a little bit more if you're working uh, and many hours per month in the business. One to note also is capital allowances, which for a furnished holiday lettings or serviced accommodation business are allowable, which is slightly different to if you're in residential lettings. Now, what this means is that you can be claiming capital allowances and annual investment allowance for some of the different items within your business, which means you can be claiming for the cookers, the furniture, all the different things because it's all part of being able to provide the services to your customers, to your clients in your serviced accommodation business. So that's something to be aware of as you're claiming the different expenses and an accountant would definitely be there to help you on that side of things. A final thing to mention is something about private use. Now for serviced accommodation or furnished holiday lets, there's many occasions where these are used by yourself or you rent it out for a period throughout the year and you let it out for maybe holiday lettings when you're not using it. That is fine and there's no issues with that. However, if that's the case, then you will need to allocate some of the expenses you incur on the property for private use. So for example, you holiday in Cornwall for a month at a property that you let out as a furnished holiday let or serviced accommodation. Now, that month that you spend in the accommodation you will need to allocate as private. So things like the council tax, you will only claim 11 twelfths of the expense as a business expense. And that one twelfth, that month that you spend there, that will be a personal expense. And the same for all the other things such as energy, electricity, gas, water, all these expenses which are ongoing throughout the year and you'd apportion those for that one month that you are spending at the property. The final thing to mention today is VAT. Now we're talking about expenses, so I'm not really talking about when you need to register and what it's all about. However, if you're over the 85,000 income threshold, you will need to register compulsory. But what does that mean from the expenses side of things? Now from the expenses side of things, that means anything that you pay VAT on, you will be able to claim back on your VAT return. So if you are VAT registered, it will slightly reduce your expenses, especially the ones where you are paying VAT. If you are not at the VAT threshold, then you can't do anything with the VAT. It is just an expense of the business. So it's just something to be aware of and check out the video on service accommodation and VAT to find out a little more on it. But I didn't want to miss it today just because it's that little bit that you may just need to remember and be aware of, especially if you are VAT registered. Hopefully today you've discovered some of the expenses that you can be claiming within your serviced accommodation business. If you aren't sure if something can be claimed or not, please leave a comment and we can confirm whether it is allowable or not allowable for tax purposes. Please subscribe to the channel and do like the video and share with anyone else who has a 
serviced accommodation strategy that may find it useful. Let's make tax less taxing.